Well, hello there. How are you doing? Oh, you are. Well, that is good to hear. And so am I. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had a very busy couple of weeks. With the arrival of my first daffodils, I had to get my garden ready. And these seed potatoes need to be planted as well. I also needed to plant seeds for my tomatoes and cucumbers and a variety of flowers in these propagators. Over in my greenhouse, I planted some early carrots into some troughs, and when the weather warms up a bit more, I'll move them outside. It's a lot of work, but I do like a garden I can eat. I planned this flight last week but something happened. Remember me saying that I was on a list and in a queue to get an appointment to get a vaccination? Well, I got a telephone call on Friday morning and guess what? The local medical center had made me an appointment for a COVID vaccination for that same afternoon at a clinic about three miles away. I was very fortunate to have a very kind neighbor who drove me over there as the appointment was on really short notice. But no matter, I've now had the first vaccination, the Pfizer vaccination. And now I'm waiting for the second, but here in the UK that could take up to 12 weeks. In the meantime, I still have to remain in quarantine as I don't have the full vaccine protection yet. So here I am in the 52nd week of quarantine. A full year of house arrest. Can you imagine that? Ah! I have to admit that it was a bit strange being out of the house after a whole year and I saw there's been a lot of changes on the local high street. Some shops were still open, but the vast majority of them are closed and boarded up with for sale or to let signs on them. <laughs> In a way, it looked an awful lot like those post-apocalypse films that Hollywood puts out. But when I asked Yvonne, my lovely driver, where all the zombies were, she said they would all be out once the pubs opened up. <laughs> So where do I plan to escape to this week? Well, Berigora Astronomy invited me to pop down under and make a flight in Australia. Best of all, it's still summer down under and I'm tired of the cold weather here in Up Over. So that's where I'm going. But the question is where to fly in Australia? Mm. Australia may be an island, but it's a really big island and it's got several time zones. Plus, the distances between the major cities are really great and I like short flights as that keeps me busy. So I started thinking about where to go. And that's when I remembered the time I ferried a World War II C-47 down to a town called Alice Springs in the Northern Territory of Australia. It was in the 60s and I was a young, bold pilot who would fly anything, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> yes, that's actually me back in the day. And yes, I had hair. So the station chief called me in one day and said he had a ferry job he wanted me to do. Besides, it would be a nice break for me and my loadmaster. Oh, 
that's him poking about the landing gear of a DC-6. But as an extra incentive, he said we could have a short holiday once we got there. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, and so that's what we did. Now, a C-47 is nothing like a high-tech 737 cockpit, as you can see here. And yes, that is blanket padding there to help keep out the cold and the draft. The route took us down the Malaysian Peninsula and across the islands of Indonesia to our port of entry into Australia at a town called Darwin. From there, it was only a short 800 or so mile hop down to Alice Springs. This is a more recent picture of the town as it is today. We arrived late on a Friday afternoon and after unloading some crates of supplies and equipment we were carrying, it was time for bed. Next morning, the local station head told us that the pilots who would be flying the C-47 were still in Sydney and they wouldn't arrive until early the following week. The aircraft they would come in on would also be the one to fly us down to Sydney where we could catch a commercial flight back to our base. So now we had time to play. And yes, the Aussies do like to party when they get a chance. Now I don't know who it was who made the suggestion, but the next thing I remember was loading a couple of dozen people into the C-47 along with what they called emergency supplies. Now those turned out to be a few dozen crates of beer. If we crash, they said, we'll need something to drink out there in the desert. <laughs> and where were we off to? A magnificent natural formation called Ayers Rock, about 200 miles away or about an hour's flying time from Alice Springs. It wasn't my first time in Australia, but it was my first time to visit the rock. And in those days, there were none of the flight restrictions as there are now. For instance, there's an old dirt runway right next to the rock, as you can see from this aerial picture. And that is where I made the landing. After landing on that old dirt strip, we explored the area on foot and ended up camping out right on the rock and under the stars. And that's when the party really started. Ah, yes. All right, let's just say that I wasn't a priest in those days and leave it at that, all right? <laughs> now, one of the advantages of flight is the ability to explore places from a different perspective. And that's what we did. So the next day we climbed back on board the C-47 and we flew all sorts of low-level level googlies over and around the rock. And then for dessert we flew over to explore another spectacular rock formation at the Olgus, the Valley of the Winds, about 40 miles west of Ayers Rock. It was late Sunday afternoon when we got back to Alice Springs and whatever bottles were still full, well, they were emptied that same evening. I don't know how that lot was able to turn up for work the next day. I was glad that I didn't have to. But yes, the Aussies do know how to party. Hmm. So with these memories running through my mind, I thought it would be nice to fly the Alice Springs to Ayers Rock route again. Now the old dirt runway is closed, but there's a posh new airport just 12 miles northwest of the rock. And that's where I'll land. After a few modern day googlies in a 737. So are you ready? Then let's have a look at the maps and charts, shall we? Here's the parking chart for Yankee Bravo Alpha Sierra, Alice Springs will be parked at stand number four. The runway is 8,000 feet, so no problem with takeoff. 
We'll depart on runway 30 using the Angus 5 departure. The cruising altitude is flight level 200, but when we get to waypoint AYEEI, we will need to be at 4,700 feet with flaps 10 and a speed of 170 knots. Because that is when we start to do our own googlies. Now there's an altitude restriction at Alpha Yankee, Echo Echo India, but once we get there, we'll manually drop down to an altitude of 3,000 feet for a much better view. The height of the rock is 2,831 feet above sea level, or 1,142 feet above ground level, which means we will be flying at less than 2,000 feet above the level of the desert. Now, as this chart shows, there are some authorized scenic routes which the local tour operators use. Well, that's all well and good for a slower and highly maneuverable beach baron, but a 737 needs a bit more space, so we'll ignore the authorized route and make our own. So this is our route from Alice Springs. We'll fly a left circle at 3,000 feet around Ayers Rock before shooting out to the Olgas and performing another full left circle around that formation. Then we'll climb up to 4,700 feet and head north to the new Ayers Rock Yankee Alpha Yankee Echo Airport, intercepting the Arnav Zulu approach for runway 13 at waypoint AYEWD. We'll follow the procedures for a normal landing, and if we get yelled at by some irate air traffic controller, well, we'll simply say that Ryanair has diplomatic status and to buzz off. How does that sound? Transition altitude here is 10,000 feet and our final heading is 125 degrees. Elevation of the airport is 1,626 feet, and the decision height is going to be radio altimeter setting at 388 feet. We will need to announce our landing intentions on 126 decimal niner when we are 20 nautical miles out. There are some restrictions at Ayers Rock Airport we need to observe. As you can see here, aircraft heavier than 50,000 pounds, and that is us, must use the turning nodes at the end of the runways to turn around. And we may not use taxiways B or D. We can only exit the main runway via taxiway Alpha. The plan is to park at Stand 1, and that's where the 184 passengers we will have on board can exit the aircraft to board the waiting taxis that will transport them to the posh four-star Desert Gardens Hotel, and they can get some really nice cold Australian beer there. Now, how does that all sound? Are you ready? Then let's climb into the cockpit and prepare the flight. We have some beer already on board. <laughs> ah, there you are. Come on board. Take your seat in the first officer's place. Fasten your seat belts and let's have a ride around Australia, shall we? We're here at YBAS, that's Alice Springs, right in the middle of Australia. There's a lot of desert around us, some spectacular scenery, and we're going to go to another particular spectacular point called Ayers Rock. But as we've already discussed, we're going to 
bend the rules a little bit on this flight. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, battery is on, fuel pumps are on, and APU is on the start. We have 24 volts showing at the moment, but when we have the APU working, then it will be 115 volts. Here we go. The EGT is starting to climb as the engine in the tail of the 737 is cranking up. When it comes back down, this blue light will come on to tell us that we have 115 volts available. And if we want to, we can switch to it on the bus and therefore put 115 volts into the full system. And there it is. We're now running 115 volts from the generator in the tail. So now we can turn on the galley so we can get ourselves a cup of tea. Emergency lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Left and right window heat, the probes left and right, the electrical pumps, and there's the APU bleed. And once we activate this, you'll hear the now you can hear the blowers working as they're pushing the air through the cabin system. And that, of course, is to give us heat if we need it or cooling if we also need that. Right, we're looking good. Now we'll turn on the IRS to align ourselves and get our GPS position. Well, here we're going to put our position in now, and we are YBAS, and we are at stand number four. And if we look at the coordinates for the parking position, that matches exactly with what the coordinates should be. So we're going to put that into the temporary memory and then enter it into there. Now we're located. Go to the route. Now I'm going to cheat on this because it was a complicated route to have to build with all of the geographic points on there rather than having waypoints. So. I'm just going to use the quick way. So I'm going to push that, do that, select, request, and while it's coming in, we're going to put in our flight, which is RYR186. That's Ryanair 186. There we go. Now we can load it. And let's see what happens. There we go. Now we can activate that and we have, have it in. Next thing we want to do is to put a fix in. And we're going to go to YAYE. And we'll have a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle. Our descent forecast. We'll put these levels in. And jumping now to our descent, we're going to see that it is 306 and 13.
and 285 and 3. And the 197 3. And execute that. Now we'll go to the legs and we'll have a quick check to make sure that we have a consistent flight route. So we'll switch here to plan and then we're going to go through this step by step. So here's the first point. We will make a change to this in a little bit but for the moment we're just checking the continuity. And it looks like we're going all the way around to our waypoint. And that's the final fix. Okay, so that looks good. Now, for departure, there is no ATIS here, so we're just going to have to go straight to the ground and get our clearance and they will assign us then the runway for departure. So Alice Springs ground is 118.3, so 118.3. And we will be departing to the south. Alice Springs ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi south, departure. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 30 using taxiway Alpha 4 Echo 1, runway 12, contact tower on 118.3 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 30 via taxiway Alpha 4 Echo 1, runway 12, Ryanair 186. Alright, we're departing from runway 30. So let's put 30 in here. We'll be the Angus 5 departure. On the arrival, we'll be coming in on Arnav Z Zulu 13. And we will be coming in on the AYEWD, will be our transition point. All right. So now we have that. Now we can go ahead and perform the initialization. We have 5.1 tons of fuel on board. We've got more than enough. We're actually only going to need 3.9, roughly. The reserves is 1.1. Cost index of 6. We'll be flying at 20,000 feet. The average wind is 298 at 10. And our transition altitude is 10,000 feet. Execute that. 11 degrees here, so we'll put 11 degrees in. And takeoff will be flaps 10. All right, we have the basic information now to be able to put the information in. So, first of all, 20,000 feet we'll put in here. So we're going to presume clearance all the way to 20,000. We will have 20,000 in this because this is the cabin pressure. And the other thing we have to look at is the elevation of the runway. And that is 1626 is the airport. So we'll put 1,000... 600, 1,000, that's pretty close. It goes in 50 foot increments, so that is close. Right, next thing we need to do is we need to put uh, our headings in. 
will be departing on runway 30, so that is heading of 296. So we'll go 296. 296 in here. And the mark is 144. All right, let's see if that works out into a good plan. Good. And on the throttle, we're doing well. Weather. And that's good. Got it all in. All right. We'll turn on our navigation lights. They're already coming on board. The steps are down and the forward hatch is open. So, now we're going to go back to the legs and we're going to make a slight change. When we get to this waypoint, A, Y, E, I, we actually need to be at 170 knots and 4,700. So we're going to put 170 slash 4700 in there. 4700 is the restriction at the area. We are actually going to go lower than that, but I it doesn't allow me to put it into the FMC, so that's what we've got. And check the second page. They're all consistent. Yep. And we're going to make that a positive 4,700. And 4,700 for that. Right, it's all set. We're now programmed to depart from Alice Springs, depart on the Angus 5 departure, and go down our route towards Ayers Rock at 20,000 feet. Okay, well, everybody's on board, so let's close the stairs and the door and then we will ask the kind people at the ground crew to give us a pushback and what we need is we need to have our tail turned in that direction yes I know that is where we need to go to runway 30 but first of all we have to go here to get onto the runway because of the restrictions on the taxiways. We're a 737 and they're not used to 737s at, uh, at Alice Springs so we have to be restricted to the taxiways that they allow. Okay, so far so good everything is looking good. All right, everything is set so now we'll contact the ground and ask them to give us pushback. And we'll have 90 degrees. We want the nose to go to the left and the tail to the right, 90 degrees and a standard pushback. Are you ready? Everybody buckled in? Good, glad to hear it. And here we go then. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that. We're going to push. Tail to the right. Parking brakes released, please. Parking brakes released. We'll be starting engine Brakes number released. one today. 
So we're going switching now to engine one. Now we have to turn off the air conditioning to the main cabin so that we've got more pressure to be able to turn okay, here we go. the turbine engines. Okay, here we go. So switch to number one. Start valve is open, good. Eventually that low pressure light will come off, we'll be watching for that, but first of all we need to be watching for 24 on that N2, because then we can introduce fuel. There we go, fuel flow is in. And it's looking good. Engines are winding up, the low pressure light has come off, and the N2 is climbing, good. I can hear the ignition, and we have 115 volts, switch to engine number two. I think they've pushed us back a little bit too far, but that's all right. We'll go on the grass. Push back, complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is on. Brake set. Fuel has been introduced. We'll watch for 115 volts up here. Start valve is open. Low Steering pressure light has come off. Watch for the slip release vents on your right. Now in flight. Thank you, Roger. There's so many ground crew people called Roger, have you noticed that? And coming up, there we go, 115 volts. Now we're going to switch to the generators producing electricity from the main engines. So we'll switch to the main engines, turn on the air for the cabin, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Good. So far so good on that. We're now set to go. We'll turn on the runway lights. Set the auto brake to RTO. And go to flaps 10. And we are now set to taxi. Brakes off. Attendance, all tight and we will make our way out to the active.
going to have our flight briefing. In the event of an unscheduled landing at an unprepared place, it's everybody for themselves. How's that? Ah. What is an unscheduled landing at an unprepared place? It's a crash. <laughs> But we're Ryanair, we will do fine. One thing that we will do while we're taxiing is the decision height at Ayers Rock is 388 on the radio, so we will put 388 into the radio setting here so it will tell us when we get to minimums that's set Everything is looking good so far. sufficient runway and they do not want us to damage the edges of the runway okay there's a lot of notices to observe here at Alice Springs By the way, the same people that own and run the airport at Darwin also own and operate the airport here at Alice Springs. We are cleared to go 
everything is set, lights, check, clock is started, advance the power to M1, push the toga button, and away we go. Slightly off center because of that other aircraft, but we'll get back on that.
when it's time to make our run around Ayers Rock. How's that? Okay? See you in a bit. I'm gonna have a nap.
there's the rock from a position that you won't normally see it. There's the old runway, just down over here. And that's where we camped out. Oh, yes. And we'll be coming up on our first turn point here.
lights are flashing, <laughs> always a good sign. No fire, that's an even better sign. All right. Well, we're at 4,700 feet, which is the altitude they requested anyway.
cleanup. Are good. Well, time to have everybody jump off. Let's open up the doors and the stairs. There they are. Taxis are waiting to take you to that four star hotel and some good Australian beer. I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was rather fun for me to go and do this route like I did how many years ago? Well, about 60 years ago. It's a long time, isn't it? Enjoy your stay in Ayers Rock. All right, everything is off, off, off. And off. And off. Shutdown is complete. Yes, we made it.